So, welcome to my first thoughts on God of War Ragnarok, a game that I still feel should be out in another year. I can't believe it's out now. I can't believe I've just played it. Uh, this is spoiler free first thoughts about the game. I'm only going to show the first level and that's about it because you've really got to play this game and that's what we have to get into here. Are you guys excited about this new God of War? Have you been looking forward to it? I can say that I certainly have been and in playing it today, man, it's a contender again for game of the year. That's without question, without question. In the first 10 minutes of playing it, you're like, yep, this is there. The graphics are there, the emotion is there, the story's there. I'll get into all of the details without spoiling it, obviously. Now, in 2018, I played that God of War and I made a claim then, I said, this is game of the year. And, and for a lot of people, it absolutely was. That gameplay, the characters, the interaction, the emotion with Kratos and his son at that age were incredible. Never mind all the action and all that stuff to do there. Now we're building from there and Kratos' son is now a teenager and their relationship has changed quite a bit and the story is continuing without spoilers as I say. And the one thing that I want to say here is something that I normally don't start off with but it's the one thing that I've been thinking about so much and that is the voice acting. I know that's what I want to start off talking about here. I was playing the game and the characters are talking to each other. You know, when you're playing a game of this caliber and all the characters are going from one section to another and they're doing that, you know, I would almost call it meaningless banter. It's adding to the story, but you kind of feel it's filler. I hope Fenrir got some sleep. Maybe he'll be ready to eat when we get home. It's still good though, right? It's still building on the story, building the character relationships. And this is the first time for me that I'm going from one section to the other and the characters are talking and I'm not hearing voice actors I'm completely buying the performances of the characters within this world that realistically are not real. And they are real. That's what's amazing. And as the characters are walking along and they're talking, they're also interacting with the environment. And that's what gets me the emotion and the character voice acting is up there as they're doing their actions and you're completely buying it. That's what I'm saying. You're completely immersed into these characters. And that has always been the strength of this new God of War series is the character interactions. And it's emotional. That's what I want to say. The big thing about this game is it's all emotion. Even my wife came in the room and there was a scene when a wolf was injured and she's, she's just walking by and she stops and she's like, oh my God, that, oh, that's so sad. That's so sad that somebody's not even playing the game, walks in, sees a certain scene and they're, they get the emotion of it. And that's the power of this game is, yes, it's an action game. And the action is absolutely amazing. It's awesome. Swinging your axe around, kicking the crap out of enemies, sending them into the air, hacking their heads off. That stuff is so fulfilling. That stuff will make you happy. But it's those emotional bits with the storyline that really get you. And this is another thing that I think is so funny. And I've noticed it on the PS5. I noticed it in Ratchet and Clank. I noticed it here. The blur between gameplay and movies has completely blurred to the point that now I was fooled once again today. I'm playing it and it gets to a story bit and the two characters talking and I'm like, okay, they're talking, that's cool. And then all of a sudden they're just looking at each other and I'm like, what, what, what's going on? And I'm like, oh wait, I can control it. It's not just a movie, it was the game. And I'm like, whoa. And that's another moment that I had today that I was like, yeah, okay, we're at that level now. And yes, it's so easy to say here, the frame rate is incredible. The graphics, the detail is amazing. I got to this one cave and I didn't mean to do it. I got to this one cave and I'm looking up with a character and I'm looking at all the icicles, <laughs> all the things, right? And all the snow that's frozen and I'm like, Oh, that's really interesting. I'm not kind of like hypnotized by it for a second. I'm like, wow, like look what they can do now. Look how far we've come. And you know, for me, being an older guy, starting back, you know, on the NES and with the Atari 2600, I could have never imagined getting to a level, 
getting to a playing field with video games that looks like this. And the graphics are phenomenal. I mean, just as the game even starts and Kratos is just sitting there and you can see every single pore on his body, you know, on his face and every hair in his beard and just the emotion of him sitting there just filing out some arrows. Just doing such a simple task as that, you bought the emotion of such a simple scene like that. And the God of War series for me now is, I, for me personally, I just want to say, it's the reason to own a next generation like PlayStation 5. It, it really is. Like, I know over the last couple of years since the PlayStation uh, was released, the PlayStation 5, it's been hard to get. And there's been some really good games on it. But this is one of those killer apps, like they used to say in the old days. It's a killer application for the console. And yes, it, it's also on the PS4 as well. I've heard that it really heats up your PS4, not in heat-wise, but in sound-wise. You just hear it humming and you know chugging along, but it can run it. Uh, where on the PS5, it really runs smooth and nice. And to be honest, I couldn't hear the PS5 at all. And I also want to talk about the haptics. I've come out and said, that the PS5 controller is my favorite controller of all time. There's no doubt about it. And the haptics here, those are the things that shine the most with the controller, really add to the gaming experience. You know, when you're throwing your ax, when you're hacking an enemy, you feel all the vibration through your controller and it feels incredible. It's really cool and immersive and really gets you into the game. And how is the music? Of course it's great. The music for God of War is always good. I, I've never heard anybody say, oh my goodness, this music for God of War is terrible. Nobody's ever said that. It's always exactly where it needs to be with the orchestra, with the singing, with the chanting, with whatever's going on with that particular scene. It's heightened with that music. You're pumped up when you need to be. You feel emotion when you need to be. It has all of that emotion in it. And as I said, the action is there, crawling up the side of a cliff, you know, hacking up an enemy, that will entertain you beyond anything. The graphics will give you that, the sound will give you that, the voice acting will give you that. But at the end of the day, it is a story about a father and son and their growth from that first game to now and seeing where they're at. And that is the really cool thing. And uh, that's the thing that when I'm playing the game, I'm completely immersed with these characters, as I've said. And that's the thing that gets me through the game. The action is obviously the most amazing thing ever. But it's that story of a father and son that really kind of hits you and uh, they're carrying on and they're pulling it off and I mean congratulations to Santa Monica Studio. I can't believe what they pulled off with this game. It's unbelievable. It's I've got to play more of it. But it's, it's right now, it's a 9 out of 10 at this point, and I've only played the first few hours. So I am so excited to go back and play all the way to the end of this because you have to. You have to experience this game. Even if you have to go to a friend's place and hang out with them for the weekend and play on the PS5, this game, you gotta go and do that. I think you'll have an incredible experience as I've had so far, and I can't wait. I mean, Christmas has come early this year, and I know Game of the Year. There's a few contenders for Game of the Year this year. There's Elden Ring, the Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and now, there's God of War Ragnarok. Without a doubt, it is moved here and it is there to stay right now. It's going to be a hard choice because all three of those games for me are very different. These are my personal choices as well. They're not your personal choices. But for me, those are my three top contenders of the year. And I don't know, man. So far, so good. And what a week. What a couple of weeks of video games. There's so much coming out. And then all of a sudden, this came down with a mighty hammer. And, you know, a mighty axe landed kind of made me wake up and go 
Whoa, we're in Christmas season and things are hot. And this game is absolutely at the top of the contenders for game of the year. Unbelievable stuff, guys. I'm really having a great time so far. So anyways, guys, until next time.